It is estimated that there could be as many as 6 billion Earth-like planets in the Milky Way galaxy. This estimate should be taken with a grain of salt, of course. It extrapolates from a relatively small number of observations. It limits its estimate of Earth-like to life as we know it. It assumes we have a good understanding of both the mechanisms of planetary formation and the requirements for the development of life. Both assumptions are questionable, but consider that number. Six billion potential homes for life, each one, a world with the possibility of oceans, atmospheres, and perhaps even civilizations. And consider that without any technological breakthroughs that break the laws of physics as we currently understand them, it may be possible to reach other stars within the lifetime of a human crew. Once we can reach one, we can reach others. Growth can be exponential. And if we can do it, others can too. Already our signals are reaching nearby stars, and others have likely been around a lot longer than we have. This is the root of the so-called Fermi paradox, a question raised, not for the first time, by physicist Enrico Fermi in a casual conversation among physicists in 1950, where is everybody? Dozens of answers for the great silence have been suggested, but you can't answer the question if you don't know what you don't know. In 1961, as part of one of the first scientific meetings devoted to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, Frank Drake made a stab at estimating the various factors involved in estimating the probabilities of contacting extraterrestrial life. This has come to be known as the Drake Equation. That's a lot of unknowns. Some have written off technological civilization as a self-destructive experiment. We certainly have been having problems with it, which would explain why nobody has contacted us. However, Recent research suggests a more intriguing possibility. Consider the concept of the Great Filter. This theory proposes that at some stage in the evolutionary process, there is a highly improbable barrier that prevents life from advancing to a technologically sophisticated stage. This filter could be behind us, meaning that intelligent life is exceedingly rare. Another possibility is the idea of a cosmic zoo. According to this hypothesis, advanced civilizations are deliberately avoiding contact with us, observing humanity from afar much like zookeepers watch over animals in a reserve. This could be for our protection, or it might be a test to see if we can reach a certain level of technological and ethical maturity before being deemed worthy of contact. Lastly, there's the notion of dark forest theory. In this scenario, the universe is teeming with life, but all civilizations remain silent and hidden to avoid detection by potentially hostile entities. Another theory is the rare earth hypothesis. Planetary scientist Robert Stern from the University of Texas at Dallas. They propose adding two new factors into the Drake equation, the fraction of habitable planets with significant continents and oceans, and the fraction of those planets with plate tectonics operating for at least 500 million years. This adjustment significantly reduces the value of N in the Drake equation making the emergence of advanced civilizations exceedingly rare. Large oceans and Earth shift from single lid tectonics to modern plate tectonics about 1 billion years ago were critical to developing complex life. This geological activity created the initial conditions necessary for life to emerge and led to diverse environments with varying climates and ecosystems, promoting the evolution of advanced life forms capable of developing technology and complex societies. Earth's plate movements create diverse habitats, recycle nutrients, and regulate climate, all vital for life. It's important for these plate tectonics to last for 500 million years because the evolution of complex multicellular life is extremely slow. On our planet, technological civilizations emerged very late in the process, driven by everyday needs such as making tools, farming, clothing, and weapons. Fire, a prerequisite for technology, means that civilizations won't emerge in strictly ocean-based environments. Consider intelligent, social creatures like dolphins and whales. Despite their intelligence, they remain confined to the sea and have not developed technology or reached for the stars. They found that an Earth-sized planet needs to have between 0.007% and 0.027% of its mass in water. Only about 33% of planets have the right chemicals to form sufficiently dense plates for plate tectonics, and of those, only about half have enough gravity to make it work. By including these new factors and estimates, the researchers find that the chance of a planet having continents, oceans, and long-term plate tectonics is very small, less than 0.2%. To put that into perspective, it's like finding just two suitable planets in terms of size and temperature that are actually Earth-like out of every 1,000 otherwise suitable worlds. 
Plugging this value into the Drake equation suggests that advanced civilizations are extremely rare, with the chance of planets having the right conditions being between 0.0034% and 0.17%. The Great Filter may not be surviving technology, but developing it. This means there could be as few as 0.006 or as many as 100,000. The universe is vast beyond comprehension and our Milky Way galaxy is just one of potentially trillions. Let's start with our home galaxy, the Milky Way. It spans about 100,000 light years in diameter and contains over 100 billion stars. If you were to travel at the speed of light, it would still take you 100,000 years to traverse from one end to the other. And that's just our galaxy. The nearest galaxy to ours, the Andromeda Galaxy, is about 2.537 million light years away. It's on a collision course with the Milky Way, expected to merge with us in about 4.5 billion years. Beyond our local group of galaxies, there are clusters and superclusters of galaxies. The Virgo supercluster, for example, contains at least 100 galaxy groups and clusters, including our own local group. But even this is just a tiny part of the larger structure known as the Laniakea supercluster, which spans over 520 million light years and contains about 100,000 galaxies. The observable universe, the part we can see and measure, is approximately 93 billion light years in diameter. It contains an estimated 2 trillion galaxies, each with billions of stars and potentially even more planets. Yet, this observable universe is just a fraction of the entire cosmos. Beyond what we can see, the universe continues to expand and its true size might be infinite. To put this into perspective, consider this. If the Milky Way were the size of a grain of sand, the observable universe would be about the size of a football field. This realization brings a mix of emotions, a sense of isolation, but also a profound appreciation for our unique world. Could it be that we are truly alone in the Milky Way? The good news is that the chances of finding planets potentially suitable for civilizations yet without any civilizations or with already extinct civilizations are notably higher. This paradoxically increases our odds of discovering worlds that are ripe for exploration and possibly even colonization. Historically, the Drake Equation offered a more optimistic view, suggesting that there should be at least 200 civilizations trying to communicate with us. However, the updated, much lower estimate hovering close to zero, provides a more sobering perspective. Perhaps the reason we haven't detected any signs of extraterrestrial intelligence is simple. There might be no one else out there to hear from. Yet, the rare Earth hypothesis, while compelling, doesn't entirely account for the adaptability of life and the potential diversity of habitable environments. Moreover, the Drake equation, even with its new factors, doesn't consider the ancient history of the Milky Way, which has been capable of fostering life for up to 10 billion years. Given this vast timeline, intelligent life could have emerged much earlier, potentially spreading across the galaxy. So, why do we see no evidence of this? Could it be that other factors are at play, ones we have yet to understand? In Big Bang cosmology, the observable universe is what, in theory, can be seen from Earth. This includes light or other signals that have had time to reach us since the beginning of the cosmological expansion. The observable universe is a spherical volume centered on the observer, regardless of the shape of the universe as a whole. Every point in the universe has its own observable universe, which may or may not overlap with the one centered on Earth. In the Hubble Ultra Deep Field image, each spot represents a galaxy consisting of billions of stars, the light from the smallest, most redshifted galaxies originated nearly 14 billion years ago, painting a picture of a universe teeming with potential. Visualizations of the observable universe reveal a staggering scale, a 93 billion light year, or 28 billion, parsec three-dimensional volume. The fine grains in these visualizations represent collections of large numbers of superclusters. The Virgo supercluster, home to our Milky Way, is marked at the center but is too small to be seen in such images. The term observable does not depend on whether current technology allows us to detect radiation from objects in this region. It simply means that it is possible in principle for light or other signals from these objects to reach an observer on Earth. In practice, there is much that remains unseen. We can only observe light from as far back as when particles first began to emit photons that were not quickly reabsorbed by other particles. Before this, the universe was filled with an opaque plasma. Astrophysicists often distinguish between the visible universe, which includes only signals emitted since recombination, and the observable universe, 
which encompasses signal since the beginning of the cosmological expansion. The radius of the visible universe is approximately 14.0 billion parsecs, or about 45.7 billion light years, while the commoving distance to the edge of the observable universe is about 14.3 billion parsecs, or about 46.6 billion light years, about 2% larger. The best estimate of the age of the universe as of 2013 is 13.798 plus minus 0.037 billion years. Due to the ongoing expansion of the universe, we are observing objects that were originally much closer, but are now considerably farther away. The diameter of the observable universe is estimated at about 28 billion parsecs or 93 billion light years, placing the edge of the observable universe at about 46, 47 billion light years away. In conclusion, this could be behind us in the form of the rare emergence of life itself or complex multicellular organisms.